Good morning, and welcome to the Vallejo Drive Church. Thank you for taking the time to sit comfortably in your homes and worship with us today. We believe that online media is going to be the future of our church and the future of most churches post-COVID. So we're trying to make sure that we're ready to do that even today. From week to week, our team works as hard as they can to prepare a wonderful experience for you. And I know they've done the same for you today. So enjoy and thank you for being a part of our service today. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Nothing can wash away my sin. Nothing can wash away my sin. Nothing can wash away my sin. Nothing, nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And nothing can lead me to your throne. Nothing can lead me to your throne. 
Nothing can lead me to your throne Nothing, nothing Nothing but the blood of Jesus And nothing can make your people one Nothing can make your people one Nothing can make your people Nothing, nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus, and nothing can make the devil run, nothing can make the devil run, nothing can make the devil run, nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus And nothing can wash away my sin Nothing can wash away my sin Nothing can wash away my sin Nothing, nothing Nothing but the blood of Jesus, absolutely nothing. Nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hi, Vallejo Drive. I'm here with my mom. And we would just like to welcome you to Sabbath. I hope you all are having a happy Sabbath so far. I have some church life announcements for you guys. So the first off is our Kids Connection announcements. And if you've been a part of Kids Connection or you're looking to get involved with Kids Connection, we are now offering a portion where we are doing updates on our kids and their families and what they're doing throughout the week, whether it's a social distance a birthday party or they're Skyping or Zooming with their friends and just taking a picture and emailing it to vdkidsconnection.com we have it on the slide right here and we will read them on our kids connection portion every sabbath so we'll highlight one or two um, of the announcements that we get during the week so send those in because we'd love to share them with our church family the next announcement i have is for story time so pastor linda has been awesome at sharing a story time every day and if you haven't seen it on Facebook, that is because we've now moved to Zoom so the kids can also see each other and interact with each other. And if you'd like the link for that, you can contact Pastor Linda. The next ministry that I want to point out is our mainline prayer ministry. And this one, we have just changed the new phone number. So if you need to get that number, also contact Pastor Linda. And that is during the week. So if you just need that time, to uh, just pray with somebody during the week, we have that option for you. And we had our first covered seminar this past Sunday at three, and we had almost 50 people come. It was like 49 people that showed up, and it was awesome. Uh, and if you would like to sign up for that, uh, Mrs. Olari has done such a good job with the presentation and the material. And that is 3 p.m. every Sunday. We have a flyer that says how you can register and join in on Zoom for Sundays. And now I hope most of you know that this <laughs> Sunday is Mother's Day. And that is why I have both of my moms here. And I would love to ask each of you a question. So. I will start with you, if that's okay. Uh, I will ask you Mother's Day question, okay? So my question for you is, what is the best part about being a mom? Okay. For me, the best thing is to see my son grow, grow up uh, to be a God-fearing and responsible man Aww. yeah that's beautiful and then I have the same question for you what is the best part about being a mom the whole journey just um, 
enjoying the growth and development, uh, constant prayer uh, for guidance so that our children grow up to um, walk with God. So it's truly a blessing. Yeah. Thank you guys. And I hope you all get to spend just some really awesome time with your mothers, whether it's uh, together or social distancing, uh, just really reach out to your moms and motherly figures, also our aunts and our neighbors, our grandmas, um, all of them play such a motherly role in each of our lives. So reach out to them, show them some love, and I hope you have a wonderful Sabbath. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello boys and girls, today I'm going to share a story with you about a girl named Julia. Julia was a happy girl who loved playing with her toys and helping mom around the house. She helped mom clean the dishes, water the plants, and sweep the floor. One day, Julia asked her mom, Mom, where is God? And mom replied, God is everywhere, Julia. Julia wasn't too happy with the answer as she tried to understand how God can be everywhere, and she continued to do her chores. The next morning, Julia said, Mom, I'm going to go look for God today. Okay, Julia. Do you want me to go with you? No, I'm okay on my own. So Julia packed up a lunch and went looking for God. She saw some people walking on the streets, but no God there. She went to the supermarket. She saw people buying groceries in a hurry. Everyone was so busy walking in and out. She also saw a girl helping her mom put the groceries in the car, but she didn't see God there either. She walked the streets and came across this woman sitting at a bench and crying, but she didn't see God. She looked, looked, and looked all over the city and she didn't see God anywhere. She was getting discouraged when she had an idea. I'm sure I can find God at the church. And off to the church she went. She got there in the middle of the week and the church was closed, but she saw a cleaning lady and again, no God there either. Sad, she went crying to mom. What happened, Julia? Did you find God? Mom, I looked everywhere for God and nothing. I went to the supermarket and lots of people were busy buying groceries. I even saw this young lady helping her mother with the groceries, but no God there. 
As I continued, I walked by this woman and she was crying, but nothing of God. I even looked at the church, and all I saw was the cleaning lady, but no God at the church. Oh, Julia, remember when I told you that God was everywhere? Well, he is. You see, he is with that young girl helping her mom with the groceries. God is with that woman crying because she needed comfort in her heart and at that moment. And God was there comforting her too. When you went to the church and only found the cleaning lady, God is also there because she is taking care of our church when we are not there to make sure everything is clean and neat for service. And that's how we see God, because God is in our hearts. But mom, I wanted to see God. God is like the air we breathe, Julia. You can't physically see him, but you can feel him. And just like air, God is everywhere. We just have to believe that God is everywhere we go. Thanks, Mom. And from that day forward, Julia started seeing God in people's actions and smiles, and she never forgot that God is everywhere we go.
happy Sabbath. As we take this time now to stop and consider the gifts that God has given us, I wanted to share a personal story with you. It was my first year in grad school. I had an apartment with one of my best friends in the world, and we had just come back from our year serving as student missionaries. The apartment was sparse. And when I say sparse, I mean, instead of furniture, we had sheets that designated the different places in our apartment. One sheet where a couch would have been, another sheet where a chair would have been. We literally were sleeping on the floor, sitting on the floor and eating on the floor. And there were a couple of rough moments. Sure, we had families that we could have turned to, but it was one of those times in life where we were trying desperately to make it on our own. And I remember getting to a point where one weekend, I realized that I was down to some salt and flour and just a few cans of dried goods in the pantry, and that was it. And I was hungry. I didn't want to tell my family. This was so silly. I was already shopping for eggs at the 99 cent store and my parents were having a connection over that. But yet, I found myself in this time where I needed help and I just didn't know how to ask for it. And that's when those miraculous things happened. I told God and before I even got to finish, I remember heading outside and there, right outside my door, was a bag of groceries from my church family. I have no idea who submitted my name to the church or who may have said anything because I had not even told my family that I was hungry. I hadn't shared any of this, yet there was this bag of food. There was God providing for me. And friends, I am so thankful for that church family there at La Sierra who took care of me just as much as I am, if not more so thankful for you, church family, who've provided food for people in this community this week. I'm filming right now, right outside the SOS Thrift and Food Pantry, where every week we are hoping to open up and, and provide food for families that are facing insecurities at this time because of lo loss of job or, or all of the things that are happening right now. So many of you showed up this week and brought groceries or donated funds so that we could purchase groceries Thank you, thank you, thank you for providing for our families at the local level. Friends, we wanna to continue to do this as a church, but also as a conference. So conference-wide, we are beginning a resource initiative as a COVID response for families that are desperately in need in this time. Why am I sharing this? Because we want you to know that you can continue to give back to our community that way as well. We are looking for donors who would be willing to go online and say that they're willing to help support five members from each of our churches around this entire Southern California conference by giving a little bit. We're being the church of the New Testament right now, the Acts Church, where we all give what we can to spread amongst those that have a need. And so, we encourage you, if God is calling you to give in that way, to please go on to AdventistGiving.org, go to Vallejo Drive, type in the name of the church, and there you will see on the list the COVID response care line item where you can donate for funds to go and help members from all of our churches in all of the conference. Friends, so you're giving locally, you're supporting uh, members in the churches, all of our churches in Southern California Conference, and you're also giving to support the needs of this church. Thank you already to those who have donated to our roof fund. You know, Pastor Kyle shared that we were $161,000 in need uh, to finish paying off work that was already done on our roof. Friends, that need is still there. Donations have come in, but we still need like 159,000 more. Friends, uh, we invite you to consider your local church 
as a place of giving your offerings to during this time. Uh, so many different ways that we want to continue to help the community, but some real and honest physical things that are going on right now. So as your pastor for community engagement, I want to thank you for dropping food off at the, at the food bank. Thank you so much for feeding people in the community who may not even be members here, but heard about this church and heard that there were loving people and that there was a way to pr uh, provide for their families. Thank you for giving through the conference COVID care on the Adventist giving page and supporting our church members conference wide. And three, thanks so much for keeping this building that God has given us to worship in, but also from as we continue to practice being a church without walls. This truly has been a fantastic time to see you engage in this way. And we just thank you so, so much from the bottom of our hearts. So in whatever way you are able to give, we thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your tithes. And we thank you so much for your offerings during this time, no matter how small or how great, God has been using it to do amazing things. So thank you for giving to your church during this time. Good morning, church family. In the book Steps to Christ, Mrs. White refers to prayer as the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. And so, family, I invite you to open your heart and join me right now as we talk to our Redeemer, the creator of all things, our friend. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to pause and give you thanks today for this day, for the sunshine, for our lives, for our families, for your protection, for sustaining us. We thank you for this Sabbath day. It reminds us that you are our creator and our, our deliverer, our, our redeemer. We're asking you now for your sustaining power for those who are on the front lines during this COVID-19 pandemic, the first responders, the medical personnel at our hospitals and clinics, those who are working at the stores we shop at for the necessities of life. We ask that you would be with the teachers, and the students that have had to learn a whole new way of doing school, and that you'd be with each of our families for the additional stress and strain we're all under at this time. Lord, we're seeking your care and your blessings. We're asking for healing for those who are sick. We're asking for comfort and strength for the loved ones of those who are caring for family members who are sick, who might have died. Lord, we ask that you would please speak to us today through the message you've given Pastor Ben. We ask that it may reach our hearts and our minds, bring us into a closer walk with you and enable us to be a more effective witness of your love and grace to those who do not know you yet in our community. We ask that your name would be glorified and praised today. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. He shall cover me with His feathers, and under His wings I shall trust. His truth shall be my shield, my strength. I shall not be afraid of the life's terrors by day, nor by night. Although a thousand shall fall at my side, and ten thousand may fall around me, evil cannot touch me. For God himself will give his angels charge over me, to keep me in all my journeys. For the Lord says, Because you love me, because you trust in my name, when you call on me, I will answer, and you shall receive my full salvation.